Hi everybody, welcome back. It is Sunday, May 10th, which is Mother's Day in the US, and it's mania. We've had a full week go by, and although I usually only film every fortnight or every other week, I'm making special exceptions for the month of May because after all, it is a holiday. or the, It's a whole holiday month for us, which I think is wonderful. And it's funny because this time last year, I was only, I was getting back into cross stitch after a little couple year hiatus and everything. And I was only just discovering floss tube. And so I really wasn't even aware that mania like happened or was a thing. And, um, so this is my first time participating. And, um, so here, I don't want to, um, take too much time at the beginning, but I'll show you what I've been working on. So plans. You know, I had decided that I would kind of try to alternate a whip and a new start throughout the week and give each one like an entire day of stitching. And yeah, that didn't happen. And mostly because there are days where like I'm tired, I have a migraine, I don't get much done or days when, you know, I start working on something and you know what, I don't want to work on it more than a couple of hours and I want something else. So what I ended up doing is ultimately I did work on, um, well, four whips and three new starts. So seven projects over the course of a week that averages out to one a day, I'm satisfied. Um, so let me show you. The first whip that I have uh, decided to work on was Halloween Cat by Satsuma Street. And um, this is one that I had lost and I found it again and everything. Um, and I really like it. So here is my progress. This is stitched on a 32 count linen that I dyed myself um, with just liquid writ dye. And I, when I, you know, I put some stitches in this and did a little bit up here, didn't get much done. And then I decided, you know what, I want to finish. I want to have a goal and I want the cat basically finished. There's a little bit of its um, ribbon here and some whiskers that are undone, but essentially the, the big cat is done. So the central, you know, figure in this is finished. And I think it's looking really cute. I'm stitching this in hand because it's color blocked. So it, goes really really fast for me. I don't need to put it on a Q-snap or some kind of frame. Um, I just kind of roll it up and I can I can stitch it in hand using the sewing method. So this is what I've done here. I'm not sure if I'm going to pull this out again this month. If I have, you know, if I get the the urge to do it then I may work on the moon a little bit. Um, again, it should go pretty fast. It's a lot of stitches and there are some clouds. So I could potentially, I could potentially pull it out again. Uh, my goal is to have this done by Halloween. So I think that's pretty doable. If I work on, you know, a little bit every month, I figured, you know, I can do like the moon and the clouds in June. I can do the trees in July. I can start working on the little cats and the pumpkins at the bottom in August and September and, and have it done. So anyway, here we go, Halloween Cat by Satsuma Street. And then I wanted to pick up my um, my Christmas garden by Blackbird Designs. And it's in the book Home for the Holidays. Here's what it looks like finished. Um, I am stitching this on 40 count um, picture this plus linen in earthen and I subbed out all of the called for colors, whatever they are, I, I don't remember, for um, four shades of Gloriana. And let me show you where I am now. So I have extended the border here and here and then I started working on this. And I'd hope to get a little bit more done on it this week, but I had um, some new starts which monopolized my time happily. Um, so I think I might can keep this over the next week with the stopping goal of having the 
it's a it's a pretty big motif it's bigger than any of the others um, finished and I want this I think done by the end of December so if we look at you know the pattern you know once I finish this you know humongous thing and maybe do you know the gold border um, I will have to start thinking about putting it on a bigger frame um, I've had bad experiences with Q snaps damaging threads so I have kind of a thing with like not covering stitching with Q snaps um, with the side whatever um, but we'll see anyway I think you know if I have this done by the end of May you know I think I can you know have more done by the end of June and then kind of July through you know the rest of 2020 I think that this is doable I find I I actually like working on the border because I'm at the point where I've sort of memorized it and or I can just look at what's been done before and it's pretty easy stitching I don't use tons of thread using just one strand um, so so far it's it's really pretty but anyway this was the second whip I worked on the third whip I worked on was Tree of Hope by Mirabilia, which was my birthday start. And this is how it is so far. So I've not gotten very much done with this and I wanted to do a lot more. Um, so I think that this might stay in the whip rotation for this week because I would love by next week to get all of, and the, this is, um, the light is sea glass. By, from Karen Waterlilies and I'd like to finish that stitching here at the very least and then it's really pretty kind of corally oranges um, in here that contrast really nicely with the green so you know it might be nice to sort of get this done ish by next Sunday but anyway um, oh I should say this is stitched on a 32 count natural linen from Wherever. I'm not sure. I don't think it's a Zweigart, but I don't think it's a Woodshelt. I don't think that leaves many options other than that. But anyway, you know, it's it's stiffer than I like, but it's still a nice quality, so I'm going with it. And um, this is from Abby Topknot Stitcher. I ordered some patterns from her after market, and she sent this pretty little needle minder. And I don't have many needle minders, but. Um, I do like to have them, you know, use them when I have them. So anyway, this is whip number three. So whip number four is my Heaven and Earth design or Haid that is based on a painting by Frederick William Burton called Meeting on the Turret Stairs. And um, if you're interested in background on this painting, my last video I, I gave a few minutes of the background of this story but um, I didn't get to do I did about 300 stitches yesterday <laughs> I was like no I really 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 wanted to do more but I just didn't have time and I was just tired at night but I did a little bit in the belt here it's really confetti so it was I didn't do a lot and then um, I got kind of sick of confetti so I went over here and filled in you know one solid color there and I'm hoping, you know, soonish to get the belt finished. And I really want to work on, you know, getting stuff filled in. And then there are a few kind of random stitches that are still blank. And it drives me crazy. Um, I don't like having, you know, kind of single random stitches. I like, you know, trying to make one section solid. But, um, yep, yeah, so there I am. There I am with this one. Oh, I should say. This is stitched on a 28 count cream Lugana two over one half cross, which is my favorite way I found to stitch a hade um, because I've tried the 25 count and 28 count and 32 count using like a full cross with one strand or ew, I've, I've tried the um, pre-gridded fabric, which I don't quite like. I like gritting my own. So it's, it's been a process over the past year of like buying patterns, kitting them up, starting them, realizing that, you know, something isn't working for me and then trying a different way. And I finally found what works for me. So yay, I guess. Um, 
But anyway, okay, so four whips and now three new starts. Um, new start number one is my most exciting one, and it's the one that lots of people have been talking about. It's Princess Aliana by Mirabilia, which came out just a few weeks ago. And when I, in my last video, I showed you a purple fabric. It was a, um, I think 32 count Lugana in French Lilac by Picture This Plus. And, you know, I, the materials, uh, the bead pack and chart for this came on Monday from Stitchery Express. And I brought it home and was like, okay, I'm starting this right now. And I re-ironed my fabric and I was loading it onto my frame. And just at the 11th hour, like I, I was connecting it to my frame and I just changed my mind. Um, and so you'll see, you'll see in just a second what I decided to go for. Um, you'll also see that I did something different. I decided to center start this one. And I've never center started uh, like a Mirabilia or Lavender and Lace or anything like that. Um, I've always started with the face and hair and kind of work my way down. But two reasons. One, I thought maybe I wanted to do um, one over one or, you know, two over one half cross skin and I wasn't sure and I didn't want it to slow me down and also one of the reasons why I like this pattern is that the colors are so interesting. It does use every single one of the newer DMC colors numbers 1 through 35 and combines them in a way that I think is really interesting and eye-catching and I mean it's busy it's it's a lot of colors and um, not for everybody but I think it's I think it's really interesting. So I did center start it and you'll see that here. So here is what Princess Eliana looks like and you can see what I'm talking about when it's you know just oodles and oodles of colors all the new ones and oh I just love it. I love it love it love it. And here is my progress so far on her. And so like I said, I center started and I changed the fabric and unfortunately the fabric is not looking anything like what it is in real life. So this is a 32 count linen in Serenade by Color and Cotton. It looks gray, but actually it's a really, really, really pale kind of like periwinkle blue. And I'm just, I don't know, it's just not cooperating with my camera. So maybe on another video or photograph or something, I can get the true color because I would not stitch this on gray. So this is a pale bluish purple. Um, but anyway, I really enjoyed working on her. The, um, the purple flowers are a million colors, so they take a long time. There's lots and lots of color changes. Um, the rest of it is a little color blocky here, but you know, this is not a quick stitch. Um, I'm not anticipating finishing this, you know, super quickly unless I only stitch this, but it is fun and I'm loving it. Okay. The next thing that I started and I have kind of been getting into a little bit of a fandom mode. Um, I found myself late at night, like many of us do, I'm sure looking at, uh, patterns on Etsy and, um, Lord of the Rings kept popping up um, in a shop called Fandom Cross Stitchery. So ultimately I couldn't resist and I ended up uh, buying the pattern and dyeing some fabric and stitching it. So let me show you what that looks like finished. Let me show you um, where I am now. So. I, ooh, it's not going to pick it up, is it? So I am right here. Oh, that's better. So what I did is I just, I had a large piece of white opal linen that I knew I was probably going to cut up for smaller pieces. So I cut this piece and um, I wanted it to be gray with black, kind of um, pretty severe like slashes through it. And 
my black writ dye, even kind of shaken up and everything, came out brown. So it was not usable. So I ended up just going with the gray, which I like. And the pattern itself is huge. So if I stitch this over two on like a 28 count, like it's called for, or on a 14 count Ada, it would come out to be like 30 inches long. Now I would love to have something that like big and dramatic, but that is a lot of fabric. It's more than I have. It would be a special order. It would take forever, yada, yada. It would take a ton of thread. Um, so I decided to stitch it over one half cross. And luckily the, you know, the way that I do the half cross, the first leg of the cross is slanting the same way, I'll show you, that the writing is slanted. And the thread that I'm using is a sulky, that. Um, and I had a gold and I had like a red, but the gold was a little bit dull. And I, you know, my thinking behind it was that, um, because this is, I should have said this before, this is the inscription on the ring that Frodo has to um, destroy, you know, over the course of the Lord of the Rings, you know, trilogy. Um, and the writing is um, uncovered through fire. And the, the script of it, if you haven't uh, read the books or seen the movies, is one ring to rule them all one ring to find them, one ring to bring them all, and in the darkness, bind them. Ian McKellen does it better. If you haven't seen the movies, you definitely should. But I thought, okay, so this is like flames, and this is maybe like ash or smoke or whatever, and, you know. I've liked working with the Sulky. I have found that it does kind of shred a little bit, um, if I need to unpick stitches, the thread that I've unpicked is not usable um, anymore. I kind of have to take it out and cut a different length. So in that way, it's a little fussy pants, but um, I, I think it's looking nice already. And yeah, it's making my, it's making my fangirl's heart happy. I have a um, the Lord of the Rings movies were coming out when I was in college and I did something really stupid for the second one. I decided to go see the midnight showing of it, even though it was the night before a final exam. And I thought, you know, it's okay. I'll see the movie and I'll get home and I'll be able to get at least four hours of sleep. And then, I mean, my exam was like at 8 a.m. <laughs> and that was so stupid. Um, because... I went to a small liberal arts women's college and the movie theater was really tiny right across the street from from the college and so it was just filled with you know women my age and all of us like fans and everything and the um, girl sitting next to me many times would like sigh and lay her head on my shoulder and I had no idea who she was. <laughs> um, but it was like magical and afterwards of course I couldn't sleep. And I still had to get up at, you know, 7.15 um, from where I was trying to sleep and go in and take this neurobio exam. And at the end of it, I wrote to my professor, I'm so sorry, I haven't slept in 27 hours. And, you know, I earned an A in the class and I don't know what I, what I got on the exam or whatever, but like, if you're young and still in college, like, don't do that. <laughs> that was a very bad decision. <laughs> Um, but ultimately, like, I think just to have the magic of seeing it, like, opening night, and in a theater, what's that, right? Will we ever be going to theaters again? Um, it was really special. So, okay. Last new start. Um, I was really excited about the release of Sakura from Autumn Lane Stitchery, which is their geisha pattern. And I bought the PDF um, right when it came out. And um, I found, I had a kind of hard time finding the called for fabric. And I know you can do it on like any fabric you want, but I, I wanted it to, to kind of look the same. And um, the designer, Erin, does 
sort of chart things and choose colors based on how they work with a fabric. And so, you know, unlike um, like Mirabilia's are often, um, they select pretty neutral fabrics and then you can, you know, bump it up to something hand dyed or crazy if you want to. And, um, but anyway, so this is called, the called for fabric is um, Memory by Picture This Plus, a 32 count, and I found it from a seller on Etsy, and I was really happy, and I started it. And here we go. So not a huge start. I'm, because the top of it at least is color blocked, I am stitching this in hand, and I just have the top of the moon and the top of her head. And unfortunately, I am missing one of the colors that go in here. <sighs> so I'm hoping like all of the non-essential stores are still absolutely closed where I live. Um, and I'm not going to like place a, an order for it, but um, yeah, I just, I need kind of one color. So hopefully within the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to get it. And um, so yeah, this is Sakura. So I've been really happy with um, with what I've been stitching and there's just you know there are not enough hours in the day there's not enough um, not enough days there's not enough time I wish there could be more and I have just decided to let myself kind of stitch what I want when I want so like I said the whips that I've been working on um, likely this week will still be, um, a little bit tree of hope or tree of hope to try to get the leaves done and my Christmas garden to try to get that motif done. If I can meet those goals, I have a few things that I'd like to work on too. The one that I pull that is a possibility is um, Thanksgiving Harvest Fairy by Mirabilia. I I love the colors. I think they're interesting. I love purple. And um, I haven't made a ton of progress on this. I haven't stitched on it in a couple of months. But I like this done by Thanksgiving. And so I'm thinking, you know, when I pick this up or by the end of May, perhaps I can say I'd like the wings done. Or I can work on the purple dress and say... I'd like the rest of the purple dress done. Um, this is a kit with classic color works and um, Mill Hill beads and a nice neutral 32 count linen that came with it and everything. So it's a really high quality kit. I really like it and I've got, you know, the others in the series. So um, this I'm thinking definitely if I can finish my other sort of benchmark goals, for my other whips, then this will be worked on too. And so that's that. I am starting a little one, one of my favorites, kind of cheeky <laughs> housework, never killed anyone, but why take a chance? Um, Lizzie Kate and I just when I was kind of in a dying mood I took another piece of the opal fabric this 32 count linen and I dyed it purple um, it kind of looks a little gray there but it really is purple and I am just going to do a floss toss and um, I've got color and cotton threads of the month that I will use and I think I mean it basically uses the original pattern uses um, a pink, a green, and a purple for the lines of text and then some other colors along the side. So I think I can easily pick out, you know, colors to use um, with this. And this is something I think um, could be like a May finish because I am still determined that I will finish something in May. I need to keep up the momentum with that. I want 12 months, you know, all 12 months of 2020, I want at least one finish every month. So that's something else. The next thing that I want to start this coming week, I actually 
absolutely forgot to show this to you, although I had it and had it in my mind. It just like, you know, I don't know if you get that where something just goes out of your mind completely. So anyway, I have the Unicorn Tapestry by Tiny Modernist. And what I realized is that this Riviera Aqua fabric, and I love teal, um, I had, but it had stitching on it. And it actually had my, my car stitching, travel stitching from several months ago. And the circumstances under which I had to sit in my car and stitch were not pleasant and, you know, relating to like divorce and visitation and uh, all that kind of stuff. And so really it, be, it had become a UFO because it had such negative emotional memories for me. And I just like didn't want to touch it, even though I thought the design was pretty um, and the linen was, was nice. I just, I didn't want to touch it. And so I decided to like reclaim the linen. I said, I'm not letting, you know, these memories or whatever hold this linen hostage when I have a pretty pattern and I want to start it and I want this linen. And I checked it was big enough. So <laughs> I frogged everything and it wasn't like too, too much, but it did, took, it did take hours. Um, and then I actually, um, rinsed the linen and let it air dry and ironed it again because it is a witch out. So, you know, it's super see-through and it's on the stiffer side, but I am planning to, um, I am planning to start it this week. And the other thing that I'm planning is, um, in my fiberlicious last sort of thread of the month, um, shipment, was it last or the one before? maybe it was February. I did get some pretty pinks. And so I think I am replacing all of the orange and some of the yellow with different shades of pink. And even one of them is like a pretty, it's like a hot pink, which is not really my color. And one, like I would go for like a muted pink. Um, but you know, this is kind of like an electric orange here. It's pretty bright. So I think I might try out this like, you know, hot, bright pink and see if it works. And if not, maybe use something else. But so, you know, bye bye orange and hello pink. And we'll see how, see how we go. Um, and I could put in some yellow too to add some contrast, but this is definitely one of my, one of my starts for this week. Last but not least, I'm not sure if this is going to happen this week. We'll see. But I may just get out and start Templar Prophecy by Long Dog Samplers. And I'll remind you again, I'm like going to be insane. And I have a 32 count opal linen from Fiberlicious in the color Oh My Moose, <laughs> which is, um, it's like this mottled brown and gray, which I think is, you know, appropriately sort of dark and um, dramatic. And I have several skeins of winter white from Gloriana like many many skeins of this and I plan on trying this at least in one over one so that I'm not using a ton of floss and it actually fits on this um, fits on this fabric and this white actually has some gray and tan in it so I think it you know it will go with this and provide a lot of contrast and we'll see like if I start stitching it and I don't like it I'm stopping and I'll take it out and I'll you know I'll repurpose the thread and fabric and find something else for it um, the other thing I'm thinking about with this is um, Stephanie from Lindy stitches is doing this and she's not doing this kind of knot work border over here so that it fits on her fat quarter and um, or maybe she doesn't have a fat quarter, but whatever fabric she has, she's cutting it. So I think I might start here around the dragon and kind of see, see how it goes. And maybe I'll do this side border and maybe I won't. Um, but anyway, so I'm just, I'm really curious to see how this will start stitching up. It's obviously not going to be a quick stitch by any stretch of the imagination, but when is it ever? It's okay. So 
that's what <laughs> that's what I'm thinking this coming week is going to look like and I don't know I've been enjoying seeing everybody's um, mania videos or even just like regular videos um, if people are not doing mania and I really like how everybody just kind of makes it their own so you know even if it's like um, trying you know 20 new products or stitching on 20 whips or whatever I think I think what people are doing is really cool to see so my plan is to see you again next week on you know Sunday or Monday whenever I get the video uploaded sometimes technology yuck um, but anyway I hope you stitch a lot I hope you have a lot of fun stitching and I'll see you soon whenever it is Thanks, bye.